When you think of million dollar Aston Martins, you think of the classic race cars, or the one-off specials of the 1960s and 50s. But what if there was one made not 60 years ago, but 10 years ago? And this is that one. 7-7. Let's set the scene. In 2008, Austin Martin was actually doing pretty well. The DBS sales are still going strong from the success of Casino Royale, and DB9 sales are also doing rather well. So Austin Martin's head, Dr. Ulrich Bez, announced something big at the Geneva Motor Show. He decreed that they would build the ultimate Aston Martin, and next to him was a rough body style underneath the tarp. And when that body style was revealed, it was revealed alongside the incredibly high bar of it being the ultimate one million dollar Aston Martin. However, people weren't really interested in million dollar hypercars at that point because, well, when you launch 1.2 million pound hypercar in the middle of a global financial crisis, these style of vehicles fall out of fashion real quickly with the general public. But Austin Martin had already put the legwork in, and unlike Jaguar with their CX-75, they pushed on. And I am very glad they pushed on, because this was a masterpiece. In order to keep the weight as low as possible, they contacted Multimatic to build the chassis. They had also built the carbon fiber bodies for both the Roof CTR3 and the new Ford GT. And there is a lot of carbon in the 177, the carbon fiber monocoque chassis, the carbon fiber suspension components, and the carbon ceramic brakes. All with very high-tech adjustable pushrod suspension, active aerodynamics, and a front mid-mounted engine from Cosworth, which gives it better weight distribution by putting the engine ahead of the driver but behind the front axle. But at the same time, with all of that tech, which yes, sounds like a late 2000s McLaren Senna with the engine in the wrong place. This was a very old-fashioned car. You see, Austin Martin couldn't find the budget to outfit a production line, so everything down to the chassis is hand-built. The badge is milled by hand, and the aluminum body panels are hand-beaten into shape. While, yeah, sure, there are government-mandated safety features like ABS and traction control, there's very little else. No driving modes, no touchscreens. It's all very analog. And then there's the engine. It's a Cosworth, as I mentioned. But it's also a monstrous 7.3 liter naturally aspirated V12 making 750 horsepower. making it the most powerful naturally aspirated road car of all time at launch. That meant a 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds rear wheel drive and a top speed of 220 miles an hour. And while sure, no one really wanted this car, it didn't stop people from being absolutely awestruck by this beautiful death machine. It was indeed the ultimate Aston by light years, in every single measure, apart from the gearbox. You see, Austin Martin decided to cut some corners, and they used the gearbox from the Vantage and the DB9, which meant that it was very clunky and slow, and in a car eons ahead of everything else, it's nothing short of a crime against the Geneva Conventions to have such a poor gearbox in the ultimate Austin Martin. But apart from that, the vehicle is fantastic and received universal praise apart from the gearbox. The power is delivered ferociously through enormous 335 rear tires. And while Austin Martins have been described like the Italian car is very soulful, very much a living thing, this is more furious and angry. And therefore, it's a bit of a strange vehicle. 
It's as elegantly equipped as a GT car, as fast as a hyper car, and can get so much third and fourth gear wheel spin that it could never go around a track properly. Now, they only made 77 of these vehicles, and seven of them were actually special editions. These were made towards the end of production by Aston Martin's Q series, which is basically a personalization division of Austin Martin. Now, I say personalization division, there were only a few custom paint options, so you pay a lot more for the same car with a fancy coat of paint. That's how special editions work in the hypercar industry. More impressively, there was a police car version in Dubai in 2013. Many people were confused as to how one of 77 road cars were made into a police car in the United Arab Emirates, but the most reasonable guess is either it was donated by a wealthy owner in Dubai, or the police found it lying around in the desert. That just sort of happens in Dubai. Either way, do not fear, it's mainly just a speeding deterrent and a bit of a show car flew for the police department. Yeah, they're not just gonna send a Austin Martin 177 out on patrol. Now, I mentioned the fact that it can never set a lap time, and that's pretty much true. Yes, it's got active aero, but it is very, very oversteer, and it is very, very heavy relative to a proper track car you would think of when it comes to push rod suspension and active aero. But what if you did want to set a lap time? Enter the Vulcan. The Vulcan was essentially a 177 engine mounted to a GT3 car, but since it's not road legal, they were able to upgrade the V12 to 820 horsepower. This time, bizarrely, it had aluminum chassis with carbon fiber bodywork and not the other way around. But it weighed less than 3,000 pounds and comes with an aero kit generating over 3,000 pounds of downforce, which means technically you could drive on the roof of a tunnel at top speed. Unless you opted for the Vulcan AMR Pro, which makes 3,800 pounds of downforce. Because you need that. Of course, this is, again, a track car, not road legal. We have a track toy that you can only use on some racetracks, because most racetracks have noise limits, which this definitely breaches. But what if you want a great handling car with a proper gearbox that is also road legal? Well, you have to be uh, quite wealthy because Austin Martin made that as a one-off for his wealthiest client. It was called the Victor. Yes, they actually named the car the Victor. Apparently, it's named after Austin Martin's 1970 CEO, Victor Gauntlet. Still a stupid name, but there you go. And basically, it combines the tech from the 177, the Vulcan, and the Valkyrie into one vehicle. It's got a 177 engine and chassis, it's got a Vulcan steering and suspension setup, and Valkyrie aerodynamic tricks and lights. Only now, the Cosworth engine from the 177 was upgraded to a road-legal 836 horsepower, and in order to rectify the sins of old, they threw out that clunky Vantage gearbox in favor of a bespoke 6-speed manual. No performance figures have been stated, but considering the only thing holding the 177 back was a sluggish gearbox, I would guess it's pretty rapid. Sure, the successor to the 177 is technically the Valkyrie, and it is monumentally faster in every single way, and sure you can get a factory Mustang with more power, but no Austin Martin before or since has ever been able to match the fury and elegance and beauty like the 177, even the DV5, one of my favorite cars of all time, and I would probably actually have the DV5 more than the 177 just because of the bond connection, but even such an iconic vehicle like that doesn't have the same ferocity or speed as the 177. It has the beauty, it has the elegance, but it's missing that third element of the triangle, and this is the only car, road legal car, that has been able to fulfill all three requirements. Maybe the Valhalla, which is the most cool sounding name for a car I have ever heard, maybe that will have the bespoke quality and the ferocious 
power that was delivered by the 177, but we will just have to wait and see.